I understood the translation of the question, I don't understand Bahasa, but I understood one thing which it didn't translate. She said, Terima kasih, means thank you. That it didn't translate. He didn't translate that. She said twice or thrice, Terima kasih. He didn't run. Anyway, I don't blame him. He's just summarizing it. Uh, later on, I realized that there is a translation going on underneath. The question posed by the sister is that uh, she has been practicing Islam. I mean, she is a, she's a Christian and she's been practicing Islam for the past two months. She learned about Islam and she offered Salah. And the question, if I'm not mistaken, that will the Salah be accepted? Is that the question, brother? Will the Salah be accepted? The reply is that, sister, to accept Islam, you don't have to declare. Even if you believe in your heart, you become a Muslim. Declaring is not compulsory. You are saying you didn't declare, but you already declared. You already said, I believe in one Allah and I believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. So you don't say you declare, but you already declared it, Alhamdulillah. Though, for any human being, only if he or she believes that there is one Allah, one God, doesn't believe in idol worship, doesn't believe that Jesus is God, and you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, you enter the fold of Islam. After entering the fold of Islam, if you offer Salah, whether you offer perfectly or not, because you are a beginner, Inshallah, Allah will accept a complete Salah. Even you may not be able to pronounce in Arabic, only if you do the actions initially, Allah will accept it. As time goes on, you may memorize the minimum Arabic required, Surah Fatiha, maybe Surah Ikhlas, Allah will pursue things. But till the time you do that, whatever you do, because you are a new person accepting Islam, your Salah is accepted. Not only is your Salah accepted, the day you believe in your heart, not declare, you believe in your heart, that there is one God and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, all your previous sins will be washed away. All. 100%. And the bigger your sin was, the more bad you used to do, before accepting Islam, the higher will be your reward after you accept Islam. Means if you were a non-Muslim who used to drink alcohol, used to rob, not that I'm saying you used to, but bigger the sin you did, the moment you accept Islam, all that is converted into good deeds. All your good deeds will remain, even your bad deeds that you did will be converted into good deeds. And inshallah, person who accepts is as though he's newborn. All is still forgiven, but the good thing is there. So I would like to appreciate, sister, that you like the religion of Islam. I would like to welcome you to the fold of Islam. And though you said it already, that there is one God and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Nobody, Papa. I want to go there to. Uh said Sahadat in front of my sister because uh, she is a uh, Hajja. You want to say Shahada in front of your sister because she is a Hajji. Hajja. Yes, yes. That's good, mashallah. But the day you believed in it, you are already a Muslim. You can repeat the Shahada one time, ten times, twenty times, no problem. You can repeat in front of your sister, in front of others, no problem. But the day you believe, you already become a Muslim sister. Because we do not know. You may meet your sister today, you may meet her tomorrow, you may meet her after a few days. We don't know how long we live, sister. So if you plan, I'm going to meet my sister after five days. I don't know whether I'm going to live for five days or not. So the day, the moment you realize and you believe in a heart, you become a Muslim sister. But if you want to repeat in front of your sister, you're most welcome. Most welcome to repeat from your sister, but the day you believe, you already become a Muslim. Hope that answers the question, sister. So all your sins have been forgiven. The salah you're offering since the past two months is accepted, sister. And if you want to say the shahada, you can say it from your sister, no problem. 
Most welcome, sir. Hope that's your question. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Then we have the question from any brother who is a non-Muslim. Are there any non-Muslim amongst the Jains? No non-Muslims. Any non-Muslim in the microphone behind there? Oh, there's a microphone on top also. Is there a non-Muslim there? Okay, brother, most welcome. Your name and your profession and your question. Check. Check. Hello, Dr. Zakir Naik. My name is Ali. I am a last year student in this university majoring in international relations. Um, I was born in a Muslim family, as you can say, a Wahhabi, a very strict Muslim family. Uh, two of my friends have shown me a video of yours, how to deal with an atheist, which I did watch. Um, and some of my friends as well has converted to Islam because of you. And uh, and that's make me think you are the most... Sir, brother, are you a Muslim or are you a non-Muslim? I am actually not sure where am I between an atheist or as a believer. Okay, fine. You can continue your question. And it makes me think that you are the most rational and easy to understand kind of scholar that come across to my life. Uh, so my question is just like two sides of a coin. The first side of a coin is um, still regarding about the law of a Muslim people to vote for a non-Muslim people. Um, you said in the previous lecture, you, you have mentioned that we cannot vote for a non-Muslim um, leader because they actually reject our God or your or Muslim's God or Allah. And then, what uh, my question is, what happens to the Muslim people who actually live in the foreign countries that do not have any Muslim candidates in their place? And the other side of the coin is this. Um, I do completely understand what the reasons why God put the bad people in the, in the in the hell. I watched a video of yours, but I still do not understand why God still punishing them in the world, just like Rajam. If you are robbing something, maybe your hands cut off. If you are having, side, uh, having sex out of marriage, maybe your penis cut off. And if I can put the question to this manner, how can God be so sadistic that he knows in the end he will be putting them in the, in the hell, but before putting them in the hell, he is torturing them in the world. Thank you. Brother, that's two questions. Brother, I understood your second part of the question. Your first part of the question you said, I said that you should support a Muslim in preference to a non-Muslim. And after that, what you said, I didn't get the question. The first part of the question. Oh, the first part of uh, it was, what happens to the Muslim brothers or Muslim sisters who happen to live in a foreign country um, that do not have any Muslim candidates in the elections. Very good. Brother, last two question. Before posing the question, he said that he's born in a Muslim family but doesn't know whether he's a Muslim or in between an atheist. He's seen my video cassette and he thinks that I'm the most logical and rational speaker. Allah alam. Allah knows the best. And he asked two questions. Number one, the first question is that I said that if you have a choice between a Muslim and a non-Muslim based on the verse of the Quran, you have to choose a Muslim. What will happen to those Muslims living in non-Muslim countries where both the candidates are non-Muslim? That's a very good question. All the verses in the Quran that Allah speaks about choosing, whether it be Surah Maida chapter 5 verse 51, whether Surah Ibrahim chapter 3 verse 28, or Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 144, all the places that say is that Lord, let not the believers take the unbelievers in preference to a believer, in preference to a believer, as the awliya, as the friend, as the protector, as the supporters. That means whenever there's a choice between a Muslim and non-Muslim for being a supporter, a protector, you have to choose a Muslim without doubt. There's no option for that. And I've given the answer in detail in my other talks and question and session. But a basic question is, what happens if a Muslim is living in a non-Muslim country? And both the leaders are non-Muslim. Who do you choose? You choose, if both are non-Muslim, you choose a Muslim that is following more of the Quran and Sunnah between the two. So between the two, you choose the lesser evil. If both are 
non Muslim, you will have to try and find out which non Muslim you select will be following closer, if not everything, closer to Quran Sunnah. Similarly, if both are Muslim, who do you choose? If both are Muslim standing for election, you choose a Muslim which is closer to Quran Sunnah. You don't choose a Muslim who will be rich, who will give you more money, he will give you housing. You choose a Muslim that is closer to Quran and Sunnah. The teachings of the glorious Quran and the Sahih Hadith. In both the cases, whether both are Muslims or both are non-Muslims, if both are non-Muslims, you choose the lesser of the evil. If both are Muslims, you choose the person who is better and closer to Quran and Sunnah. Hope that answers the first question. Um, is, it, is it actually forbidden to vote for a non-Muslim? No way does the Quran say it is forbidden. But if there is a choice, if the two people standing are Muslim and non-Muslim, without doubt, 100% should be Muslim. Because Allah says, Allah is very clear cut in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 51. That let the believers not take the Jew or the Christian as the awliya. That would be what awliya means friend, protector or helper. Because they are protectors unto themselves. And anyone who does that becomes one of them. So if you choose a Christian or a Jew, Allah says you will become a Christian or a Jew. And this is not the strongest verse. Surah Maida normally is not quoted by me in lectures. The stronger verse is the other verses. Surah Maida is yet a, a less stronger verse. The stronger verse is our Surah Ibran, chapter 3, verse 28, which says that let the believers not take for all ya, the same word, friends or protectors or helpers, an unbeliever rather than a believer. An unbeliever rather than a believer. If anyone does this, you will not receive the help of Allah. Except by way of guidance. Here Allah is very clear cut that it is not talking about election in this verse. Please don't get the Quranic verse wrong. It is talking generally for protection but leaders are included. It is not exclusively talking about leaders. It includes leaders. It is generally talking about where you are talking about ultimate protection, your as your main protector, as your main helper. Then, if there is a choice between a Muslim and non-Muslim, you have to choose a non-Muslim. If you don't, Allah will not help you. Now, if you see the analogy in this verse of the Quran, and the same message is repeated in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 144. Ya ayyuhu amanu, O you believe, take not for awliya, friends, helpers or protectors, unbelievers, mushriks, in preference to believers, anyone who does, does wrong. Now here, there was a question posed to me in Pandu, a lady again, born in a Muslim family but deviated. She was telling me that, you know, but the Christian candidate is very good, he is better than the Muslim candidate, so why shouldn't we choose a Christian candidate? So I said there can be three cases. Can be that the Muslim is better than the Christian. Second case, can be both are equal. Third case, can be Muslim is better than Christian. In case number one, if according to your thinking, the Muslim is better than the Christian, so you don't require the verse of the Quran also. You have to vote for the Muslim. If both are equal, the Quran is clear cut that you have to vote for the Muslim. In the third case, if the Christian may be hypothetically, it's ten times better than the Muslim. I'm not saying that. I have not met both these candidates taking part in the governor's election. 
Christians in Jakarta. But hypothetically, even if you agree that the Christian, according to you, is ten times better than the Muslim. And I asked the sister yesterday, how is he better? No, because he's removing poverty. Okay, fine. You may think, if you want the Christian, you may get a million rupees more every month. Maybe. I 
like somebody else. Shirk. Biggest sin. He is giving me the money. With that money, if I help 10% of that money, poor people. The biggest injustice is he is not thanking his own creator. <coughs> that sin cannot come cannot be compensated by doing small good deeds like giving charity. You have another employee with you. Huh? You are paying him 10 million rupees. He is coming dedicatedly, follows all your advice, but does not give charity outside. He is taking full 10 million rupees. You tell every employee of mine should listen to me. Follow my advice and should also give charity outside. He is following everything of yours but not giving charity outside. Will you find him better or the person who takes 10 million does not come to office and goes and helps their competitor? Who will you like? The first one. First, first one? Which one? The Those who come, who come to your office every day or that that doesn't come to the office? The first one. The come one to office every day. Correct. Who comes to the office but may not give charity. You tell in your speech, earn from me, listen to me. In ending, you also say give charity. He listens to you 99% but does not give charity. Yet, he will be a better employee. Similarly, you have to understand as the human being, as the Muslim, that our creator, our main boss is Allah. And Allah says, if you support such a person who does shirk, Allah will never support you. So even for me, if I come to know hypothetically that the Christian is hundred times better in worldly things than the Muslim, but that Muslim has Iman, he believes in Allah, even if I lose every month 10 million rupees, 1 billion rupees because I voted, yet I will vote for him. You know why? That 1 billion is very small. Even if the non-Muslim gives me 1 billion rupees a month, if Allah does not support me, what's the use? If Allah does not support me, what's the use? And the guidance you get in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises four greatest women in the world. One of them is Bibi Asya, the wife of the Prophet, the uh, wife of Moses, the wife of Pharaoh, sorry. Asya, who was the wife of Pharaoh, the richest man in the world, the most powerful man in the world, who called himself God, knows Billah. He was a Tagut. What does she do? Imagine she's the wife of the most powerful woman in the world, most powerful man in the world. That means she's the richest woman, most powerful woman in the world, right or wrong? What does she do? Allah says in the Quran in Surah Tahrim, chapter number 66, verse number 11, Ya Allah, Ya Rabb, I would like to exchange my position, what I have in this world, I would like to exchange for a house in Jannah, close to Allah. She's a businesswoman. She wants to sacrifice all her wealth, all her positions, all her power for a house in Jannah. So the house in Jannah, brother, is more important than the palace in the dunya. Because the palace in this dunya is limited. Success in this world is not the money you earn in this world. It is not the fame you earn in this world. It is not the popularity you have in this world. It is not the degree that you get in this world. It is not the wealth you own in the world, not the good car that you have. Success is Iman. Only if you have Iman will you be successful and go to Jannah. So for the Muslim, for the moment, the worldly things are not success. Our success is the Akhirah. So there is no two doubt at all. Any Muslim who has the basic knowledge of the Quran in no way can support a mushrik in competition to a Muslim. The Quran is very clear. A person who doesn't have knowledge of the Quran and if he supports in ignorance, then may Allah forgive him. But since you have heard me now, you cannot say that you are ignorant. 
I have given you the tafsir of the Quran. Not one verse, three. Even Surah Maida chapter 5 verse the 20 talks the same thing. There are many verses. So brother, if you know the logic of why has Allah said that, that means by voting a Mormon, a Muslim, you are supporting Allah, khalas. Even if that Muslim causes a loss to me, I am doing it for Allah alone, khalas. Even if that Muslim is my enemy, if I know, if he comes to power, he will put me behind bars, yet I will vote for him. Why? I want Allah with me. Even in jail, Allah will be with me. Correct? So this is the verse of the Quran. There is no two doubt about it. Come into your second question. Your second question. Why is Allah, knows Billah, say this to you? That if a person does bad, he puts him in Jahannam, no problem. But in this world, if you rob, chopping off the hands, if you rape, death penalty. Correct? Yes. So why is Allah so sadist? No. The reply is, brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and the most benevolent. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Every surah of the chapter, except for Surah Tawbah chapter 9, begins with a beautiful formula, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most possible. You ask me the question. Allah is cutting the hand. What is so merciful about it? It may sound like a logical question, but you fail to realize Allah also says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 41, Allah is never unjust in the least degree. That means Allah is also just. And many non-Muslims object to me. Brother Zakir, what is Islam for? Ruthless religion. You rob, the chopping of hands. You do rape, death penalty. I asked a simple question. And I asked this question to thousands of non-Muslims. That God forbid, if someone rapes your mother, and if the rapist is born in front of you, what punishment will you give him? Believe me, 100% of the non-Muslims. Except for one, I'll take that later on. All of them said, we will put him to death. Some went to the extent of saying, if I made the judge and if my mother is raped, I will torture him to death. So I said, why the double standard? Somebody rapes your mother, you want to put him to death. Somebody rapes somebody else's mother, you say death penalty, barbaric law. There was one very smart non Muslim in America. American consider themselves smart. Then you increase the volume, please. Then you increase the volume of the pointer speaker, yes. A bit more. He told me, if someone rips my mother, I will not put him to death. I will give five years imprisonment. So I said, good. I said, do you know according to the statistics of America, every day in America, every day in America, more than 4,000 rapes are taking place. Every 20 seconds, one rape is taking place in America. You know, I am here since the past two hours. Two hours. Already, already a couple of hundred rapes have taken place since the time I am here. And he told me, from the stats you come to know, only 16% of the cases are reported, according to the FBI statistics. Out of 16% arrested, 16% reported, 50% are let free before the trial. Out of those that undergo a trial, those that undergo a trial, there are only 10% who are convicted. That means every 125 rapes you commit, Chances you get punishment is only one. 125 rapes you commit. Chances you get a punishment is one. They're very good gamble. 125 rapes you do. And in America you will be caught and put behind bars as one. And the statistics tell us out of those that commit rape and those who are punished, when they come out, 95% time again they rape. So I told that American, if you want.
want your mother to be raped again, you are most welcome. I would not like my mother to be raped again. 95% chance he'll be raped again, sentence. So he told me, if that's the case, I will put him to death. Statistics. It is a practical law. I am asking you the question. Today, the country which has the maximum rape in the world is America. If I implement the Sharia in America, that every woman she makes the hijab, after that any man looks at the woman, he should lower the gate. After that, if any man rapes the woman, he gets capital punishment. I am asking you the question, will the rate of rape in America, in USA, if you implement the Sharia, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? What will happen? If you implement the Sharia in America, will the rate of rape increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? Brother, what's your answer? MashaAllah. Islam is the solution to the problem of humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Besides being merciful, he is also just. Allah will give him punishment on the day of judgment, no problem. But if Allah does not give him death penalty, if he's caught, he will keep on raping thousands of mothers. Correct? So Allah, besides being merciful, is also just. If you rob, you chop off the hands. But that does not mean that if a person robs bread, his hand will be chopped off. If a person robs bread, in an Islamic country, who will be held responsible? The Khalifa. How dare a person robs bread? It's the duty of the Khalifa to see that everyone gets a daily bread and butter. In Islamic Sharia, chopping of the hands is only if you break a lock. If you just rob, it's not chopping of the hand. If you break a lock, something which is closed and something precious you take, then your hand will be chopped. Today, the maximum crime in any country in the world, it's in USA. I'm asking you the question. In Islam, we have a solution for not robbing. It gives zakat. If every rich person in the world gives zakat, poverty will be eradicated from this world. After you give zakat, if anyone drops, his hands are chopped off. According to Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 38. I'm asking you the question. Today, the maximum crime that takes place is in USA. I'm asking you the question. If you implement the Sharia in USA, any every rich man should give zakat, 2.5% of his saving every lunar year. After that, anyone drops, his hands are chopped off. I am asking the question, will the rate of theft and crime in America, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? Decrease. Decrease practical law. So Allah is our creator. You and I may think wrong. He is our creator. He knows how we think. That means the law is there not to rob. Even in today, Indonesia has a police or not. Police tells you, don't rob. The law, if you rob, what does the police do? Police catches you and puts you behind bar. In Saudi Arabia, chopping of hands. Therefore, the least rate of rape in any country in the world, it is Saudi Arabia. The least rate of theft in any country in the world, Saudi Arabia. The day Saudi Arabia stops chopping off the hands and stops death penalty for a rapist, even in Saudi Arabia, the rate of theft will increase. Not that Saudi police is very strong and intelligent. It is implementing the Sharia. Do you believe there is one Allah? Yes, I do believe one God. Uh, Muhammad is a messenger of God and Jesus is not a God. I do believe in that. Masha, so that means you are a Muslim. Uh, to be a Muslim for me, I cannot uh, put the, those factors as my fundamental thought. It's not the question whether you or me, it is the question of Allah. What you can say, I am not a practicing Muslim, okay, that's fine. But to say you are not a Muslim is kufr. If you believe there is one God, and you believe that Jesus is the messenger, you believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the final messenger, you are a Muslim. You can say, I am not a practicing Muslim. But for you saying you're not a Muslim, it is kufr. Kufr means you're booking your seat in hellfire. Allah says, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, never despair the mercy of Allah. And even if you know that one man only will go to Jannah, pray to Allah that you are that man. 
if you know one person will go to Jahannam, pray to Allah that you are not that person. You cannot say, okay, so many good people are there. If one person will go to Jannah, how can I go? Pray to Allah. And don't be confident if one person will go to Jahannam, oh, I'm a die, I'm giving a lecture, how can I go to Jahannam? Pray to Allah that you are not that person. This is the mercy of Allah. So you, if you know there is one God, you believe there is one God, you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, never ever say you are a non-Muslim. You can say, I am not a practicing Muslim, may Allah give me hithaya. Do you understand brother? By yeah. saying you are a non-Muslim, you are booking your seat in hellfire. Do you understand brother? Yes, I do. So now inshallah, you are a Muslim. I'm not sure. You're not sure? What are you not sure of? You don't, you're not sure whether Allah is there or not? Say that again? Yes. You are not sure whether Allah is there or not? I'm not sure about what? No, no. You, do you believe Allah is one? Yes, I do. Khalas. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger? Yeah, absolutely. The khalas. Absolutely you're a Muslim. So there's a question. You don't know the definition of Muslim. Yeah, but there is some... some yes, you may not agree with certain teachings. Okay, we'll come to that later on. But basically you're a Muslim, correct? Whether you live in Indonesia, you have an Indonesian passport? I do. So you're an Indonesian, correct? Yes. You may not agree with certain laws of Indonesia, correct? Yes, I do. But yet you're Indonesian or not? Allah subhanahu 
subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all the human beings, including you, and you have been thinking he's a sadist. Once you come to know you have done something wrong, what you should say? What should you do? You are a logical person, correct? You believe in logic? Yes. If you accuse someone, suppose you know of a man and you think he is a sadist and tomorrow you come to know he is a saintly person, what should you do? What should you do? Keep quiet. Laugh, clap. What should you do? What does the logic say? If you have been accusing someone and you come to know it is wrong, what does the logic say you should do? I thought you were a logical person. What will it what should you do? Don't know. You don't have any answer for that. If you have been accusing someone, a one human being, falsely, and you come to know you are wrong, what should you do? Um, apologies. Correct. Apologize. Minimum you can do is apologize. But that person may not be, and someone who has given you everything, who has given you life, if you accuse him, what you should do? Repent. Correct. MashaAllah. Allah says in the Quran that if you do repent, Allah will forgive your sins. Maybe a human being will not. If you do something to me, I may not forgive you. But he is Rahman or Rahim. Even if you accuse him of being the saddest, now Billah. The moment you repent, Arabic word is istighfar. You ask for forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. All your sins washed away. So easy. Easy or not? What do you have to do? Only say, I'm sorry. Kalash to Allah, not to me. Very easy. Right or wrong? Correct. Coming to your question. You asked one more question. What is the question, brother? Um, about the ancient tribe, they don't. Ancient tribe. Yeah. He asked a question. What if someone doesn't speak Arabic? Who, does, who hasn't heard about Islam? Why should Allah put him in hell? Where does the Quran say? Does the Quran say if you don't know Arabic, Allah will put you in hell? Does the Quran say if you have not heard about Islam, Allah will put you in hell? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Every child is born in Deen al is born as a Muslim. Muslim by definition means a person who submits his will to God. Later on, he is influenced by his elders, by his parents, by his teachers. He starts doing idol worship, starts doing fire worship, and he becomes a non-Muslim. That is the reason when a non-Muslim comes back to Islam, the correct word is not convert, the correct word is revert. He was a Muslim, he came back to Islam. He went on the wrong track, he came back to Islam. Every child, if you pick up a child from a Jewish family, pick up a newborn child from a Christian family or a Hindu family, if you do not let them come in contact with any human being, they will follow everything of Islam except in name. There was a research done on two tribes, the Kapauku tribe, and the Australian aborigines. These two tribes did not come in contact with modern civilization till as late as 1950. When scientists went and tried to find out what was the way of life, they believed there was one God, they believed they had no idols, they did the sujood prostration to worship him. It was everything in the basics of Islam except in name. They didn't call themselves Muslims, they didn't call their religion Islam, but they submitted their will to Allah. They were Muslims. Do you think Allah will put them in hell? They didn't do shirk. They didn't make idols of God. They didn't do sujood. Allah says in the Quran, you may ask me the question, whether if there is someone in the world who has not heard about Islam today, it is very difficult. Next to impossible for anyone to say he hadn't heard about Islam. But even if I agree with you hypothetically, 0.001% chance. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 53, Allah says that, Sanurim ayatina filafakhi, wafi anfusihim. 
hatta yatabayyana lahu anna lahu that soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons until it is clear to them that this is the truth allah says irrespective whether someone tells you about islam or not irrespective whether you know or not allah says that to every individual human being he will show every human being the signs of allah in the furthest regions of the horizons until it is clear to him annaul haq that this is the truth that means that's why allah says in the quran on the day of judgment no kafir will ever object to allah allah didn't get the message allah will tell i gave you the message directly <coughs> why not i said let me free that sir why will they not object because allah has given the message to every human being but when the message comes islam is a true religion don't serve alcohol i have a fast hotel if i don't serve alcohol who will come to my hotel so they don't listen to on the day of judgment they will not object to allah why not i'll tell you because they will know they will they will know allah is just they said we made a mistake give us one more chance allah said i gave you thousands of chances in this world khalas now the test is over so that's the reason no human being will ever on the day before he dies before every human being dies allah himself gives the message to every human being that there is one allah every human being every human being therefore when they are resurrected on the day of judgment they cannot say i did not get the message this is allah's justice those who don't know about allah they accuse allah If you read the Quran with translation, almost all your answers will be solved. The problem is we don't read the Quran with translation, or if we read, we don't understand, we don't ponder. Whether I read the translation of the Quran? Um, yes, I do. I was. Not what? Did you read it? I did. When did you read it? A couple years back. How many times have you read it? I'm not sure. Hundred times. Hundred times you read the Quran? Yeah, I was born in a very strict Muslim family. No, no, I'm talking about translation, brother. Oh, the translations, yeah, a couple of times. Not Arabi, Arabi, Arabi people do khatme Quran good, alhamdulillah. Translation, couple of times means two, three times. Yeah. Do you remember times. what I've told? No. Do you remember? What you have to do if you read a book which you don't understand? What do you do? You read again, correct? Yes. Who's to blame, you or me? I yet don't know the Quran well. I yet do not know the Quran very well. I am a student. If you read the Quran a thousand times, the thousand and first time you read, you get more knowledge. That's the beauty of the Quran. The Quran is unlike any other book. The more you read, the more you understand it. The more you get the other meaning of the Quran. Even after reading a thousand times, you would want to read it more. You read a couple of times. Who's to blame you or me? What I'm telling you is from the Quran or not? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. But only the Quran. Maybe you read the verse of Surah Fusilat, but didn't ponder over it. Right or wrong? Right. Who's to blame? Allah or you? Who's to blame? Yeah, me myself. So, Inshallah. Yeah, I got that. Say that you are not a practicing Muslim, and I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He gives you hidayah. I think you are intelligent. Use your intelligence in the right direction, brother. Don't use it to deviate. You know, even the Satan was very intelligent. You know that, Iblis. Use your intelligence to come closer to Allah, not go away. If you don't know the answer, try and find the answer. Correct? Right, I get that. Yes. So I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, may He give you hidayah, makes you a practicing Muslim. and makes you a soldier of islam to spread his deen inshallah thank you and what about are there any non muslim sisters do we have any non muslim sisters there on that microphone any non muslim sisters here non muslim sisters here 
non muslim non muslim are you non muslim muslim in the class where in the queue i want to ask on behalf of my non muslim call the non muslim here i'm sorry doctor but i'm a muslim you are a i just come for to islam okay sister come in the front why don't you stand in the ladies line come in the front sister that line is for the gents why are the volunteers helping them get the lady in the front there are separate lines kept for ladies and gents why do you want to bring them in huh i would blame the volunteers the volunteers should guide them are there any other non muslim sisters first we'll give the chance to non muslims who are born in non muslim family and are yet non muslim after that we may give chance to a person was born in a muslim family and has deviated and third will give a chance to a revert who was born in a non muslim family and has accepted islam are there any non muslim here mo yes oh there mashallah non muslim born in a non muslim family yet a non muslim before wait wait there is a queue as far as reverts are concerned those who are born in non muslim family and have become a muslim they would get the third chance i am not muslim oh, okay so wait sister there are many muslims waiting in the queue here up down everywhere first we'll give chance to those who are non muslims born in a non muslim family then we'll give a chance to those who are non muslim who are born in a muslim family and deviated to being a non muslim are there any non muslims who are born in a non muslim family Are there any non-Muslims who were born in a Muslim family and now consider them to be non-Muslims? I come from a non-Muslim family. But now you are a Muslim, correct? No. Not a Muslim. Okay. Yes. Ask a question. Yes, sister. Most welcome. Sister, if I understood, please check. You say you are a non-Muslim and yet. Born in a non-Muslim family, yet a non-Muslim, correct? Yes. But volunteers, please check that out, please, and then you can ask the question. Okay. Uh, perkenalkan nama saya Cindy Apaira. Saya berasal dari keluarga non-Muslim dan Muslim. Ayah ibu ayah saya adalah seorang Muslim yang taat, dan ibu saya juga uh, dan ibu saya juga merupakan non-Muslim. dari keluarga yang taat. Saya berasal dari Poso, Sulawesi Tengah, daerah yang terkenal dengan konflik kerusuhan dan teroris. Jadi ada kesenjangan antara perbedaan agama di sana. Oke, okay? so, dan sebelumnya saya agak sedikit nervous karena suatu kehormatan saya bisa bertemu sama uh, Dokter Sakir Naik yang selama ini saya tunggu-tunggu untuk menjawab semua keraguan saya karena sampai saat ini saya belum bersyahadat karena ada beberapa pertanyaan yang saya ingin ajukan tetapi saya hanya akan memberikan pertanyaan yang menurut saya begitu penting oke jadi pertanyaan saya bagaimana pendapat Bapak tentang ee, tentang ketritunggalan Allah ketritunggalan Ketritunggalan Yesus. Jadi saya dari kecil sebelumnya saya belajar agama Kristen karena saya oma saya Kristen. Saya hidup di lingkungan yang non Muslim. Terus tapi abis saya adalah seorang Muslim dan saya juga belajar Islam. Oke jadi pertanyaan saya menurut bapak bagaimana tentang ketritunggalan? Yang saya dengar di sini kebanyakan di Indonesia mengatakan bahwa Yesus itu Orang Kristen itu menyembah Yesus yang dianggap sebagai mereka itu menuhankan Yesus. Tapi bagaimana kalau menurut pendapat saya bahwa e, orang yang saya pelajari orang Kristen itu menyembah kepada Allah dan percaya akan kepada Allah. Tetapi Yesus itu hanya sebagai teladan karena seperti dalam pengakuan iman Rasuli, aku percaya kepada Allah Bapa yang Maha Kuasa, Khalif Langit dan Bumi. Berarti orang Kristen memang menganggap bahwa dia percaya pada satu Allah. Tetapi Tuhan Yesus itu adalah sebuah teladannya yang dijadikan teladan. Karena setiap orang Kristen berdoa itu selalu diakhiri dengan doa. Aku bawa doa ini. Sister, 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 we are not here to hear a speech. The question answer time, your question should be two or three sentences. If 
if it's more than two or three sentences, becomes a speech. You have already spoken about 20 sentences. You said, you're born in a non-Muslim family, then you said you're a non-Muslim, I can feel the camera wearing hijab, then you ask him a question, don't give a speech. Two, the person typing also cannot translate. Ask your question in two or three sentences, don't give a speech. Two or three sentences. If it's more than two or three sentences, it's a lecture. Please translate that to her. If you can translate that to her, the coordinator, please translate what I said. Ask the question in two or three sentences. If it's more than that, it's a speech. Speech time is over. The first question is brother, I translate to her in Indonesian. Okay. I think you are understanding me. Translate to her, ask the question in two or three sentences. One question. Not more than that. Uh, yeah. Brother, okay. the public has understood. You have not understood. I am talking to you, brother, the coordinator. Brother, here. Yeah. Yeah, look at me. Brother, uh, tell her she yeah, should yeah. ask the question let, in let, two or three sentences. That's it. Yeah, let me inform them. Uh, maaf, bagi para penanya, ya, uh, silakan bertanya keep keep and short, ya, seperti yang telah diumumkan tadi, dua atau tiga kalimat saja. Tapi silakan, jangan panjang-panjang, karena beliau mengatakan kalau panjang itu nanti juga. Uh, pidato ya atau speech ya. Kami persilakan. Dua atau tiga kalimat pendek. Jadi pertanyaan saya eh, di mana di Bibel itu ayat berapakah yang dikatakan bahwa akan datang seorang nabi yaitu Nabi Muhammad dan di mana dikatakan di dalam Bibel bahwa Nabi Muhammad mendapat wahyu Jika ada, saya ingin tanyakan Bible ayat berapa? Ayat yang mendukung pernyatan adanya Nabi Muhammad. Terima kasih. Let me translate in English. Uh, where could you find in the Bible that uh, there gonna be a messenger called Muhammad? And where could we find in the Bible that that Muhammad will be given the revelation? short speech and what I could grab from the translation, she asked about Trinity and then she jumped to the second question. So inshallah I will, what I could understand from the translator was the was difficulty in translating. She is asking about Trinity and she is asking where does the Bible say that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned as the messenger and that will get the revelation. Regarding the second question and answer first, and I mentioned that earlier, maybe she didn't understand English. I've told in my earlier answer that there are many prophecies of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is mentioned in the Bible. If I speak for a few hours also, I cannot complete. I'll just give the references of the major one. He is prophesied in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, in the, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. He is also prophesied in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse number 12. He's mentioned by name in the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. He's also prophesied in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 26. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. As well as Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For even the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that year shall he speak. He shall glorify me. This year, in Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, saying, I have many things to say unto you. That means Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, wanted to say many things. But he knew that they could not understand. So he, that the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth, talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He shall not speak of himself. All that year shall he speak. That means all what revelation he gets, he will speak. 
he shall glorify me. And we know Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam glorified this Alayhi Salaam. And this is clearly mentioned. For full detail, refer to my video cassette, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Bible. Coming to your first question, you said that what is my view regarding Trinity, which I understood from the translation on the screen. The word Trinity, sister, does not exist anywhere in the Bible. You read the full Bible, the word Trinity does not exist. But if you read the Quran, the word Trinity is mentioned in the Quran. The Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 171, Balla Takulu Salasa. Do not say Trinity. In the Khairul Lakum. This says, stop it better for you. For Allah is one Allah. So Quran says, do not say Trinity. And the message is repeated in Surah Mahida. Chapter number 5. That Lakat Kafr Lazina Kalu. They are doing kuf, those who say Lakat Kafr Ka Inna Sal Salasa. They are doing kuf, those who say Trinity, those who say God is three in one. So Quran says in two different places, Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse 171, and Surah Maida chapter number 5, verse 22, that do not say Trinity. Anyone who says they are doing kufr. So saying Trinity is prohibited. The word Trinity is there in the Quran, it says do not say. What does the Bible say? The word Trinity does not exist anywhere in the Bible. The words which is closest to the description of Trinity is the first epistle of John, chapter number 5, verse number 7, where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. This statement that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Word, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, this is the closest to the explanation of the Trinity. But if you read the scholars of Christianity, they say, if you read the Revised Standard Edition of the Bible, revised by Thaidu scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different corporate denominations, they say that this was first epistle of John, chapter number 5, verse number 7, is an interpolation, is a fabrication, is a concoction, and they have thrown this verse out of the Bible. So this verse of the Bible, which is closest to Trinity, has been thrown out from the Bible as an interpolation. So this concept of Trinity is nowhere mentioned in the Bible. It is the teaching of the church. It is the teaching of the church, not of the Bible. That's the reason the Quran is right in saying that do not say Trinity. It says stop it, it's better for you. Hope that answers the question. Can we have the next question? Is there any brother who is a non-Muslim who would like to ask a question? Any brother who is a non-Muslim? I believe the sister who asked the question earlier, the sister who asked the question earlier, I could understand from the translation that a father is a Muslim and a mother is a Christian, correct? Yes? yes? Sister, what are you? Kalau uh, status KTP saya adalah Kristen. Tapi pada saat ini saya lagi sementara belajar, tapi saya saya menggunakan hijab, mungkin ada lihat, karena saya benar-benar menjaga kehormatan saya sebagai wanita. Dan saya semakin ingin tahu benar-benar dengan Islam itu. Hanya saja saya belum mengucapkan syahadat, karena saya tahu ketika saya mengucapkan syahadat, berarti tanggung jawab saya besar terhadap agama saya. Uh, my ID card, uh, it is it is uh, mentioned in ID card that I am a Christian. I am a Christian. Uh, and I decide not to declare syahadat. Uh, I decide not to declare, declare syahadat because uh, when I declare it, uh, I will have uh, to show the responsibility. Sister has said that 
her id card says she is a christian she is wearing a hijab to protect herself that we forgot to translate and she doesn't want to declare shahada because then she will be responsible to follow islam correct that's what i sister i did not ask you what does your id card say i asked you a question what i do my id card may say anything allah will not check the id card all the id cards are not true but i feel and i think you are a muslim sister do you believe there is one god sister do you believe there is one god saya rasa saya belum muslim karena saya belum mengucapkan syahadah sister you are giving uh, yes or no Percaya. that uh, yes you believe there is one god yes i very good do you believe jesus is god peace be upon him or do you believe is messenger of god do you believe jesus christ peace be upon him is he messenger of god or is he god sir yes, yes i believe jesus peace be upon him is he a messenger of god yes. or is he god yes or, i believe karena ada tertulis dalam bible oh sebagai messenger messenger mashallah so you believe there is one god you believe jesus is the messenger of god do you believe prophet muhammad is the messenger of allah i give you references do you believe prophet muhammad is the messenger of allah do you believe prophet muhammad is the messenger of god saya percaya adanya muha nabi muhammad makanya itu pertanyaan saya maksudnya yang semua keraguan saya yang sampai saat ini yang sehingga saya ingin bertemu bapak itu yang saya mau pertanyakan bagaimana sejarahnya tentang nabi muhammad The person typing is typing Indonesian. Type English. She is speaking Indonesian. The person typing on the screen is typing Indonesian. For whom? Can you type in English? Ah, uh, she she want to prove. Ah, uh, how can we believe that Rasulullah Muhammad is the messenger of God? That that's what I told you, sister. I gave you references from the Bible. You ask me where does the Bible say he is the messenger? I gave you references from the Bible, so many references and explanation of the last verse. Wasn't that convincing? Nah, begini maksud saya, yang saya percaya, yang saya pertanyakan, di mana di Bible itu yang buat saya ragu bahwa uh, masih saya pertanyakan bahwa Nabi Muhammad itu adalah benar-benar utusan Allah. Jadi di mana ayat di dalam Bible itu yang mengatakan Nabi Muhammad adalah uh, sudah Pak, jadi sudah disebutkan tadi banyak ayat di Bible yang menyebutkan bahwa Muhammad itu adalah Rasulullah. Sehingga ketika Bapak I gave you so many references, you want to repeat again? I gave so many references all about clapping. You want me to repeat it? If I repeat it, will you believe is the messenger? If I repeat the references, will you believe is the messenger? She's she's questioning. Where in Bible could I find that Muhammad is the messenger of uh, God? And I told her that you have mentioned some verses in Bible telling that actually the Muhammad is uh, the messenger of God. Ya, dan sekarang ketika Bapak karena udah menjawab itu tadi, sorry tadi saya maaf saya sedikit nervous. Saya percaya ketika Anda memang benar-benar tadi membuktikan jawabannya ada di. Ya. Ya. Bilang apa? Now she becomes believe. She believed that oh, uh, now the Muhammad is has come. the messenger of God. The translator did translate. Now the translation is telling I believe that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mentioned in the Bible. The so sister now you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes. Mashallah. The so sister that means you are a Muslim. To become a Muslim you require minimum. What your ID card says forget. The ID card we will change it. I will ask the university of Mumbai to change your ID card. That's easy. First, changing your heart is important. Sister, do you believe there is one God? You said yes. Yes, I believe. If you believe there is one God and you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, that means you are a Muslim. You are already wearing the hijab, mashallah. So you are already practicing part of Islam. Thank you. Would you like to 
said in Arabic? Would you like to say it in Arabic? Inshallah. I say Arabic and you repeat Inshallah. Sister, is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Saya mau tapi bukan di sini, tapi di depan orang tua saya. I'm willing to declare shahadat, but not here, but in front of my parents. You can do it again in front of your parents, no problem. Shahadat you can do every day. Once you say that means not that you cannot. I say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Yes. Ashadu. I'll say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Jika anda ingin mengucapkan syahadat, mohon diikuti. Diikuti pernyataan syahadat dalam bahasa Arab. Bersedia? Gimana Pak? Yes, I'm ready. Yes. Yes, brother. She is willing to declare Shahadu. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Ashadu Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. Can someone translate into Indonesian to her about the Shada? I bear witness. Aku bersaksi. Aku bersaksi. Tiada Tuhan selain Allah. Dan aku bersaksi bahwa Nabi Muhammad adalah utusan Allah. Masyaallah. Masyaallah. She knows Shada better than you, brother. She knows the translation of better than the coordinator. Mashallah, Mabruk sister, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the moment you accept Islam, all your previous sins are forgiven. All your previous sins are forgiven, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you hidayah, to even convince your mother to come to the fold of Islam, and very soon the university will change your ID, Inshallah. Inshallah to a Muslim, Inshallah. And I pray that may you be able to spread the message of peace to the others. Can we have the next question, please? Is there any Jen, any brother who is a non-Muslim would like to ask a question? Any non-Muslim? Any non-Muslim there? Muslim. Any non-Muslim here behind? Okay, anyone who is a revert? Okay, sister, you can ask the question. Any revert?
Jawaan Kudus in the church. So, may I join the church and may I join the what is that? Perjamuan Kudus in Bahasa. So, uh, if I can, what is that? Um, I can I can speak clearly, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that is my first question, and I have uh, next questions. Uh, before this, I was a Christian, and I okay. I think I will deliver these questions by Bahasa Indonesia because I think it is so complicated.